Welcome to our intermediate soldering class. Uh, I am Jelly. Uh, Jose at DigiRain is our soldering master for tonight. And this class is hosted by Unallocated Space. We are a 501c3 nonprofit located in Severn, Maryland, and online. We are a, a nonprofit. Uh, so whenever we take donations of things and stuff, uh, whether it's uh, especially with monetary or physical assets, you might get a tax benefit. And we're also, we don't charge for our stuff. All our stuff is free. So whenever we can host an event, share some knowledge uh, from our generous community members, we love to do so. We are always looking for more people to come out and help. Uh, people come out and help in a variety of ways. Uh, it's by sharing knowledge, so teaching classes, mentoring, and just providing assistance on some projects as someone's looking for help to build something. Sometimes that means equipment. And generous people also donate their money. Um, we take donations in all dollar amounts, and we do have membership information available on our website if you're interested in becoming a member. Um, to become a part of our makerspace slash hackerspace, to learn more about us, what we do, who we are, what nerd stuff are we talking about this week? We have a lot of places for you to check us out. We have a very uh, popular Slack server. We have Facebook, Google Groups, uh, we have a blog, Twitter, and all our events are always on our Google Calendar as well as on Meetup. Uh, so if you want to talk to us, engage with us, ask us questions, uh, participate, we're online. Come come hang out with us. That's my glorious presentation. Uh, DJ Rain, you have it from here. Okay. Welcome to our second class in soldering. We are still in the beginner level. Uh, we are have stepped up from the weevil. The weevil is here. This is what we had done previously. And we are looking at something that's going to be a little bit more advanced. So one of the problems we, or one of the things we had last time was we knew what our resistors were going to be based on which ones were still in the, the paper. So... Here, you'll notice we have two resistors that are not in paper. One of them is the one meg and one of them is the 10K ohm. So if right here, this little guy, these are now bigger resistors than the ones we had previously. You can actually look at it and very carefully, you will see it is on the banding, look for the gold side. I'll flip these over so they're on the same side as those. You will see gold on one side. That is the tolerance of how close they got to actually getting the numbers correctly. And you'll see brown, black, blue, then gold. And that one is your one meg. And then you will see for the 10K, brown, black, orange, then gold. There is charts online. And I had a chart somewhere around here that shows you the banding. You can start reading the banding. So if we go through our kit, we have our pick, which is this guy right here. Be very careful when handling this component. This one's a little bit more complicated than the transistor we had previously. You may wish to, if you have one, grab an anti-static band and connect yourself to something that is ground. Me, whenever I go for ground, there's a chassis for a computer next to me and I just plug myself in there. Me, since I'm not gonna be moving at all and I'm not gonna be uh, moving my feet on my carpet, I am going to take the risk and not plug myself in. You have the four 470 ohm, which are in paper, your one meg, your 10K, your Zener diode, seven of your LEDs up here. The, those are the 10 millimeter LEDs as opposed to the smaller ones we had for the Weevil. Your piezo with leads, your four screws, your base. And I believe this, this is the, these right here are the um, pieces of acrylic that will offset your dice kit off of the acrylic. This is what we see right there. You can see them right here. The battery holder, or sorry, the, your actual dice kit, your battery holder, and your uh, battery. That should be everything we need for this kit. 
Uh, the instructions are in the chat. If you go to the Spark Fun page, there's a little documentation tab on the product page. Click that, and then you can have the assembly kit there. The reason it doesn't come with this is this is an 11 page kit that's very intricate. Like I printed it out so that I could uh, look at this. If you are following along, we are now on page three. So we are going to start off with soldering the one make ohm to position. Okay, there we go. Step one, re resistor install. Start with first with the 470 ohm resistors. This is a resistor value red green for the, for the red and green kit. If you have blue LEDs, you will have a 330 ohm resistor instead. These are going to go into R1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's take a look at the board. Uh, on this side, we don't see anything. We flip over. We, ha we have them. So there's R1, 2, 3, then 4. So we're going to hold this there. While we wait for my soldering iron to come up to temperature, I will be, so my soldering iron is now plugged in. Flip the switch on it. Let's talk about the rest of the kit, the rest of the actual soldering part. My tools are my soldering iron, which is off camera, my wicking material for when I make mistakes, my solder, which we are using 60, 40, uh, tin lead with 2% flux, the snips, tweezers, a fan that you can't see that is off camera to make sure that we stay well ventilated, an open window, and I'm wearing a pair, but then also I have a second pair of safety glasses. You want to make sure you wear safety glasses because when uh, you do burn yourself, as you can see, I have a couple of marks, you will uh, flick that uh, soldering iron up. Make sure on your soldering iron you do have a wet sponge. You will need that to clean. And here we go. That should be up to temperature now. Let me test my... Yep. Move it across my... Didn't give myself enough slack on my... There we go. I have my soldering iron clipped so that when it falls, there was no way it's going to hit my leg. There we go. Good, just enough slack. So the magic part, whoop. Sweet spot is going to be right here, not at the tip, as we learned on the weevil. Please make sure you keep your soldering iron nice and clean. Never touch any part of cross here. Even for me, when holding this, I can feel here, there, about at this, this collar, that I don't want to touch anything beyond that collar. So let's grab these four L that's for resistors. One, two, three, four. And we are going to be soldering in one, two, three, and four. Remember, when doing these, you're going to be putting, you're going to slide the components in, then you're going to be putting the tip of this as close to the component wire as possible with the solder, because the goal is to fill that hole and have a little bit of a cone that comes off of it. And then whenever you pull away, you want to make sure you're pulling away in the direction of the wires. So here we go. We are looking for the picture shows that the LE, that those resistors are on top of the board. So here's the top which is the silk screen that says one, two, three, and four. So what you're going to want to do is bend slightly, bend slightly, then bend some more. So that way you don't put too much stress on the resistor. And I'm going to push in, push in, and just kind of work its way in to try to get those as close to the mother or as the, of your PCM as possible. If you don't get super close, you may need to bend a little bit more. 
as I didn't bend as much as I should have. And by looking at the kit, we don't have to be perfect. This is a, uh, there is some tolerance here. So yeah, this is not perfect and not a perfect in. So now I know I can go bend these much closer to the component. Come on. Okay, well, that one's closer. I'm bending this really close to the component. Oh, okay. So the parts list on the bag is actually where each of these components is going to go. So that's kind of nice. There, I actually got that last, that third component, that third one pretty close in. The other one's not so much. One and two didn't didn't look very good. Just if you don't mind, while we're uh, there, so they're in a way. How long have you been doing this for, soldering? I have been. I learned to solder in the Air Force uh, back in two thousand three, and I was soldering regularly. Like if I had shown the this uh, level of disregard for components to my instructors, I would have had to redo everything and then probably also had to run a couple laps around the building. Oof. But thank goodness I'm not in the Air Force anymore. Um, there. Now these, I'm pushing the leads out. So I have done things like uh, rebuilding game cubes, uh, rebuilding radios. Tape decks were the biggest thing to go and do nice repairs on because lots of components there. So I've pushed all the wires aside. So now we can actually get some solder in there. So let's see if I can get this adjusted just right so that you are not... Excellent. We have both, I can see through the magnifying and you can see through the magnifying. Let's see if I can get some in. Here we go. I'll pull just enough solder out, get the component hot. Nice bead there. Nice bead there. That's a good one. That one wasn't as good. I ended up using a lot more solder there than I should have. This one I didn't use enough. There. There. This one come from a different angle. I was starting to get too close to solder's cheap. Uh, so if you get to the point where you think you're using where you have solder getting too close to you, just give yourself a little bit more space on your solder. There. I think I got all of them good the first pass. Let me take a look. So let's see if we can move the components up top. Nope. All the all of them are are solid in there. The only one that I was worried about was right here on R2, but I can see the solder in the hole comes all the way to the top. So those are all good. They just they look hor they look horrible, but they're actually in pretty good condition. So I'm going to pull each of the legs up. Anything that's inside where you see the silk screen for the battery, you really want to get that snipped as close as possible because there is not very much clearance on these on these batteries, the battery holders.
Yeah, we still are using extremely basic components. We are not using any sort of capacitors because then we go into a new level of security or safety there. Actually, yeah, it looks, these all came out really nicely. You can see, actually, let's see if it will see better through this. Yeah, I can't get it to zoom just right, but you can see the, actually, yeah, you can see the reflection of the, the eight cones that we created and they're just nice little dimples now, or they're nice little mounds there. And then down here, these ones are very close to the board so that when we put the uh, uh, battery in, it'll be nice. So that was R1 through 4. I'll hold for a moment. That was R1 through 4. Let's move this to there. So now they will want us to do R5 and R6. R5 is here. R5 on the board is this one here. R6 is down here. So now we learned we want to bend this really close to the component. So what I do is I push my thumb right in and then I'm using the meat of my finger to pull. And I know there. R5, and that it goes nice and snug in, pull the leg away, pull the leg away, and then this is R6, pull this close, pull this close. Well, this case really isn't as difficult as, I mean, it, you, it looks like there's a whole bunch of components here, but it really is actually not too difficult. The, the simple components. Of course, I say that and then I bend the leg on this resistor on the on the R6 resistor. Now, if I were anyone that is in this class, I'd be very careful when bending your resistors because if you snap the leg, you're going to have a much more difficult time because you are going to then have to do a repair by soldering the leg back onto the components where me, I have a box of resistors. There. That second one is not looking so nice, but oh well. Come on. Let's make it a little nicer. There. It's fine. I mean, there's huge, le LED, there's huge leads on these LEDs, so I don't have to make this perfect. I have to remind myself I'm not being graded on my soldering skills here. Now, even though I've been doing this for years, I haven't really touched a soldering iron. Ooh, wow. This board's big enough that I actually have to use both clips. There we go. I haven't really done much solder work in about six, seven years. I mean, at the time we also were doing, uh, you would uh, be rated on your soldering based on how much solder you use, because if you thought of it like airplanes, every gram has to be accounted for. So if you had a little too much solder for every single connection that you were doing, that would slowly start to add up to weight. Where here, yes, a few grams are not going to make that big of a difference. But even then, I got some excellent connections there. 
on the top it looks horrible because th those those legs oh all that extra leg but it it, it does on the back side has beautiful connections and none of the connections because you want to be very careful especially with the uh, r's one to r1 r2 and r4 they're so close together it's very easy to accidentally uh connect them together um you will hear probably some hound dogs in the background we're getting very close to hound dog dinner so they they wanted us to know that uh they know it's almost dinner time oh forgot to mention your solder may look like this i mean really it's the same thing as what i have in my spool i just prefer the pen this pen design because that keeps it nice and coiled perfectly and then i have something to hold on to while i'm um spooling out okay so we have done we've completed step one using the same method uh getting the resistors in so now we are doing the diode installation diode installation will go in d1 be extremely careful with the diode because it has a very thin wire very easy to snap your component here so let's pull up here let's see where is this going up oh, d1 is this little silk screen spot here we can take a look at the diode and it is that big so something to note that is very crucial led oh that's leds Yeah, a, using a pair of needle nose pliers is tempting, as the, but do not, because this diode is extremely fragile, you will easily break it. They are directional. The notch on the instruction, well, you'll see this little itty bitty band on the left side of the board, has to match up to the black band at the end of the diode. So you, if you pull this up to light, I can't really get you a good... Let's see if it'll do good here. Actually, you can sort of see that. You'll see it has a black band, and then it, go, then it kind of goes to amber. The black band has to match with the band, because this is a directional component. You want to do a bend here and a bend there, just a little bit away from the components. Then do that. Slide in. Making sure your black band is correct. Ooh, mine fit nice and snug. That's good. This is also another fairly hardy component from for the soldering purposes. So let's get this just right. Clean off the tip a little. Get some solder. Okay, that's that's done well. There. That one actually went in nice and clean. Let's check to make sure. On the on this side I see solder flush with the board. So that's time to clip. But I mean really that's the goal. You want the, the solder to get into the well. Make it flush with the board. There we go. There. That's a little ugly. There. Not so ugly. And the component itself is nice and sturdy. Excellent. So I'm going to pause here for a bit. Uh, anyone raise your hand if you are having problems you need some any help right now uh, let me know how's it coming along for you jelly i'm doing pretty okay so far i am um, i'm not getting my solder all the way through on one or two of the components which is okay i don't think my, my, my tent up high enough 
Otherwise, I'm um, yeah. Well, I mean, then that's where we get the the fun part of. Like me, when my solder iron, I can dial in my temperature. So I'm actually dialed in right now at 300. And that seems to be doing just fine with this solder. Uh, that is something you need to play around with. Figure, find, get, Read the documentation on your solder. Find out what's the best operating temperature for it. Also, the best operating temperature for your uh, components. I have uh, some Chinese solder that claims to be lead-free. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I end up going up to about it looks three fifty Celsius on my uh, on my iron here, and that's when it about got happy with uh, going through. Oh yeah, sorry. When I say three hundred, yes, three hundred Celsius. So when we when we say the, these will burn you, yes, they will burn you. Just a little bit more than a pizza. <laughs> Okay. That was very. I, I paid attention a lot to what you said, and uh, watching the guide like three times, make sure I got that Zener diode in just right. Yes, and that one's very easy to mess up. This one's actually been pretty good because it's actually a fair. They gave you us a fairly large diode. I'm, with this kit, they gave us nice large components because it makes a difference on how you do things. So. Because you, we could have, they could have given us very small uh, resistors. Because these are pretty fat resistors, and then they would have, they would have sat very close to the board and very easy to get them into the board. But they wanted us to be able to have the ability to read those bands, because there was three different types there. Mm -hmm. And let's see. So we got the now it's going to be LED installation. and excellent so for the leds the longer leg you'll see each of them has a slightly longer leg will go where the plus hole is and the plus hole will also have a square metal instead of a circle so they they, they try to do this multiple ways to make sure that you got it correct and these will go on the front end too and these we don't need to bend the legs because they will fit in nicely and should fit nice and snug against the board. And I don't think any of these, yeah, none of these holes are even remotely close to anything else. I like this uh, piece of this board. They gave us a lot of space. Now the weevil board, actually this might be a better kit to start doing in the future. It's just too bad it's, what, a couple bucks more expensive? I can't remember. I think so. I think it's like five bucks more, like not a big deal when we're buying a couple at the same time. But uh, it is much easier to get your components in on this one. This isn't a big deal for me, but I'm just I'm just thinking of um, that there's there's more parts in here, more potential for mistakes. Yeah. Different well, mistakes. The, yeah, especially... Well, the, so when you're doing, was it one, two, three, four, five, six? There's six... Dia or six resistors, which versus the three resistors on the previous one. Mm -hmm. There's one, tra there, each, there's two different trans. Oh, okay, that's where you could get the big problem is the transist. Uh, is the, the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I that's forgot about that already. Yeah, the transistor in the previous one was extremely hardy and had no problem. So yeah, I guess the Weevil kit really is a good starter kit. I mean, we never said we it wasn't, but next next year we can definitely like switch it up. Well, the the, the only problem I have with the Weevil kit is some of the it's very easy to bleed over because some of those holes are very close together. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely using the helping hands. I, I spent money and got myself a um for thirty bucks got one of the the fancy ones on Amazon. And probably like 20 bucks. And I'm very appreciative of that. There. There's all seven of my diodes wired in horribly. Now time to... So because you have... So I... So because I did all of the components at the same time, what I will do is start at the top left corner... And then 
work along the entire row, then jump down, work through each of these rows as I go down. So I will do, in this case, I have it flipped so that the the lab's silk screens on the bottom, the battery silk screen where it says CR2032 is on the left side. So I'll end up doing all three of the pluses on the top, then the three negatives, then jump down, do a positive, then a negative, then all three positives, and then all three negatives. Otherwise, if I don't have a system, you're going to run into a problem of, did you actually get everything in? There we go. And there's one. There's two. But yeah, there are definitely some uh, members at the space that do beautiful solder. And I am not one of them. <laughs> I do have fun with it, though. And something I mentioned on the recording was the, it's also useful to add uh, rubbing alcohol with some uh, uh, cotton swabs to your kit so that you can clean up the, ros the rosin when you're done. Which makes sense for if you're doing production equipment. But if all you're doing is something that's, you know, a simple toy, you don't have to. Oh, that's nifty. The, uh, the solder really does conform to that square uh, connector. There we go. Let's check. So that's three across the top, three on the next row, then two in the center, three in the next row, three on the bottom row. Excellent. Let's verify that they are all solidly in there. Yep. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that next kit The when we get to the actual intermediate kits. So do we want to do the signal generator first or the, no, we'll do the Tesla coil first because that will give us something to test the uh, signal generator against. I dig it. Because we can always plug something into the uh, Tesla coil speaker. And I'll make sure to pull all the instructions for that beforehand and do kind of a dry run through. Ooh, yeah, everything's nice and clean, not too bad. Let's see if you can see it nice and clearly there. Yeah, you can see it pretty good. That is nice. LEDs. Flip this to this side and using this to this. Yeah, I think I'm going to, since I'm doing these more often, pick up a better version of uh, these alligator hands. Because as you can see, this one really enjoys falling over. go yeah that's actually not that bad now it's not overextended 
so yeah the LEDs are actually not that bad. It's just a lot for this one. It's it's very simple solders, but just a lot of them. So how's your LEDs coming along, Jelly? I am right along with you, and I made the uh, the new mistake of clipping before I checked. Yes. So all, one of my uh, yeah. Yes, always check. <laughs> yeah, so all of them are pretty good, except for one, and one you can see like, yep, uh, that that's close. You know, props for effort, but you know, there's like. I could stick my almost stick my fingernail in the gap there. So it's not awful. It's not noticeable right away, but you, you know, I see that. I know it's there. Okay. Now this is going to be the highly sensitive part of our build. We have to get that pick chip installed. So you're going to want to ground yourself with your strap or place your feet firmly on the floor and do not move them the second you remove this from the foam you'll see there's a cutout on the silk screen that is on the, with the side that says dice kit and you want to match that there so now that we have that set up going to pull this off of the foam. I am now not moving my feet. You want to push it perfectly in. Come on. Very gently. Very gently. Now what I'll be doing is very gently with my thumb pulling the or with my nail pulling the legs away from center just so that it can help hold that component in you don't want to go too hard just enough to just barely bend those legs and i'm using my thumb nail let's see if i hold this very gently just very gentle there now it's holding it in it's not holding in perfect, but it's holding in fairly snug. This one, you have the capability of completely destroying the component with your soldering. So you're gonna have to work fast because you don't want the heat to get up into the component too much. So yeah, this would be why this would be have to be the second step from the weevil. Because the previous transistor there, you could easily just uh, work all day and it'll be perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, have it set up so that the CR2032 silk screens closest to me, I'm going to do the top row first, and then I'm going to move from left to right. So let's get the solder there. Oop. Come on. There, got that one. Next one over. Got that one. Next one over. Got that one. Next one over. Got that one. You'll notice what I did was I started at the tip of the leg that was still sticking out, got it hot, moved my soldering iron down into the hole as I had the solder pushing down. And then I pulled the um, soldering iron up to so that the solder would fill the hole. Whew. Let's take a look at those. Mm. 
Wonderful. So I can see on this, on the, the side that says piezo, I can see four all solder coming up the four holes there. And if I tilt it just right, I can see solder coming up the four holes on the other side. And the component itself is not warm. So what I'm going to do before I clip these is test to see, do I need to, um, okay, so yeah, I don't have, for me, I don't have to clip because there's just enough clearance for my battery holder. So I, because I prefer not to clip those components unless I have to, especially with these kind of kits, because in case you mess up, but so good, that ends up being good. So I just tested the fit. I wasn't actually putting the, that on there. Whew. So Jelly, how's your uh, chip coming along? Mine's done. I, as soon as you said, oh, maybe clip, I start clipping away. So I, I, I have a few leads that are left, but mine is, well, you won't be able to see that well. Mine, mine is in there and secure. Not hot like, like yours was not. I was able to follow your method. And I am right along. Yeah, my board's a little scuffed up because I didn't get protection on the alligator clips. So there's a little bit of scratching from the alligator clips, but otherwise, not too much burning. Looking pretty good. So now we're going to do the battery holder. This one's going to be nice and easy. The silk screen, this is going to be on this side, following the silk screen. Make sure that your um, flat part matches your flat part. And the hole, the hole for it is actually inside the silk screen right there. And it should fit. Mine fits nice and snug. They pre-bent the legs for me, which is excellent. Now, this is where we're going to get really fun. Because we have to get in between. We have to get the solder in between those two LEDs and a diode or, or, and a resistor down there which is gonna be on the side that says uh, the dice kit part. So here we go. So I'm gonna come in from the chip side. Ooh. Okay, I got it in. I got really close to that uh, resistor though. I just touched my LED. So actually I'm going to, since I'm coming in from the right side, I'm gonna flip this there. So that'll give me a little bit more clearance. If I wasn't doing this for camera, I would move things around a lot more, but I'm trying to keep what I'm doing on camera. Oh, good. That one was good. Let's take a look. Yep, battery holder's nice and secure, but you see there's a big lump of solder there. Let's see if I can clip some of that off, or do I have to come in with the uh, wicking material? Actually, it looks like I'm going to have to come in and make it hot okay much better I, I mean it's not great but at least it no longer is very close to that resistor then we got the battery holder okay i really don't like that uh that other clip the one that's really close Close to the um, to two LEDs and a uh, and the uh, resistor. Uh, the black. What's the black thing called again? Oh, the chip. The chip. Yeah, like that's right in between three LEDs and the chip, and I'm really afraid of touching that chip. Yeah. Which is why you saw me. I just globbed a whole bunch of solder on it. Yeah, that's that's mine to be honest. Just one giant ugly glob because I. I don't want to risk it either. But I am I am good. So we have two more parts left in terms of or one more part in terms of soldering. Yep. 
So this one is, uh, they suggest getting a piece of tape, which actually I, I do agree with. Uh, but of course, I don't have any tape anywhere near where I'm sitting. So what I'm going to do is go get some tape while we wait. Oh, when talking about tape and components, never, ever, 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 ever hold a component while pulling scotch tape off of the tape dispenser. Because scotch tape, when pulling it off there, has lots of static electricity and will kill your component. When working with components, I will usually go with masking tape or this blue, the painter's tape or some electrical tape if I want, but never, ever, ever scotch tape. So this. I have scotch tape. That's the good stuff, right? There we go. <laughs> so I have this blue and they said here, all you're trying to do, you'll see it says BNR. So that lets you know which side is black, which side's red. In this case, red is also the square hole. So let's come over here with this component. Take your time when doing this. Red is the square hole. There, as you can see, I got black in this round hole, red in the square hole, then taped the two wires down. Then on this side, you can barely feel the wires poking out the other side. What you want to do is make it so that the insulation ends right here on the back side and that no insulation comes out through the front side. This is going to be fun because we have to completely fill that hole. Turn this a little. So I can get try to get this on camera. There. And this, since I didn't have a component to warm up, I put the solder on my soldering iron. Then I went and dabbed into where the contact was and then pulled up and away. Now I'm gonna let that cool for a little. And then I'm going to warm it and do it again, warm it. Do it again so that way it flows down into the hole let's check to see if that made it all the way through oh wonderful it made it all the way through so now i can take the tape off and my insulation is not scorched that was a very easy way for us to very easy way for us to just completely mess up Yes, uh, soldering a piezo. Like, say if you broke your wires and had to go and try to do this again, you would have an extremely hard time attaching these wires back on because a piezo loves to absorb heat. I'm in the same place now. I, I Like you, I, I, I took my time with that little bit of patience and the first hole I got in perfectly the second one I had to go back in for a second second try and I am secure no scorching so no before we go any further though we're going to crack open our battery and verify we have a working thing Excellent. We have LEDs that are working. 
good. So pop your battery in, you have this. Now we're going to have our legs. You can see two legs are not enough to, there is a one of these that has a little channel in it that is to go over your piezo. So you'll take your screw screw second leg oh good they didn't push them all the way through there and then that will allow me because you'll see one of these is thread one side's threaded And it has the beautiful sticker still on the main acrylic. Take that off. And of course, I forgot. My screwdriver. No, I didn't. I didn't forget my screwdriver, Jelly, because remember I showed you last time my beautiful yes. little kit that I got from Spark Fun. And these I just tightened just barely enough to get to hold it in place. You're going to want to then take the piezo with the shiny side down. Does this, does the piezo actually glue itself to the, where's the rest of this kit? Uh, they recommend any sort of glue, but they didn't include any for the piezo. So a little dab of, even if it's something as simple as a stick, glue from a glue, uh, glue stick would be fine in this case i'm perfectly fine with the, the piezo being loose and then it's just going to sit there you just want it to make sure it's not getting in contact with the uh the uh, the metal electronics and for the second one i am actually just putting one screw slightly through to be my guide to get the two spacers in place and then get me close to where that needs to be there we go excellent and then i can then Make sure to use the screw to push through because some of the um, before you get the, them lined in here, because some of them, they didn't bother to knock the plastic, the acrylic out from the hole. So you would hate to get this all lined up and then now you have to um, figure out how to get that piece of plastic out or the acrylic out and then tighten just enough to get that in place. And I actually am going to go grab a little bit of uh, glue to glue this in place. I prefer my, the Aline's original tacky for these kind of things. Cause I mean, this component is not hyper, it's hypersensitive for what it does, but it's, we don't need it to be perfect and we go on to the shiny side and then just attach it there, let it sit while it glow, grow or while it cures. But you see how sensitive this is. 
the piezo every time I'm moving it it's coming up with a different number mostly three it seems to like three it seems to like one I think five came up once Ah, there's six. Turn off my soldering iron. Remember, it's going to take 30 minutes for your soldering iron to cool down, or you want to wait about 30 minutes for your soldering iron to cool down. Don't want to uh, tighten too tight. You can see how sensitive that piezo is. That me even just trying to tighten these screws is enough for it to offset. And that's already getting nice and tacky. Yep. There we go. All let's do is just let that cure for a bit. Does anyone have any questions? Jelly, how's yours coming along? So I am... Uh-oh. That's fine. Mine, I was scared for a second, so mine is in the same boat as yours, very similar to. I am all glued up, and if I touch it, I get different numbers. And then did you go and find yourself a glue stick or something else that's tacky? I went a little dangerous and grabbed E6000. Because <laughs> that's the only I only knew where E6000 was. I looked for a, a stick real quick for 3D printing and you don't have a glass bed. So I have glue sticks around here, but the, the 3D printer's uh, being reconstructed, so I don't know where I put my stuff. Yes, E6000, that's a, that's a little overkill. It definitely will do the job. Like I said, I have this this stuff because this is great for um, uh, like if I'm doing felting or very simple uh, uh, small jobs, like one step above uh, the the Elmer's white. That makes sense because this does a. Uh, um, this dry, when this cures, it cures completely clear. So Ooh. I'm perfectly fine with that. It just takes a little bit longer. And I just under, I just have to understand that when I'm coming into the job. And don't forget when you're done to wash your hands. <laughs> yes, always wash your hands, especially when soldering. Yes, once I got this, once I got it uh, where it's glued down pretty good, and got the chassis nice and secure. It takes a it takes actually a lot more pressure. And you can actually see here where I there there got a little solder on one of the LEDs. Ah, oh, that was fun. I like this kit. Thank you for doing this with us and teaching us how to do this. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, you know. I we didn't actually do the soldering tonight. Um, just like on the other night, we didn't do it, but it's really, really helpful to have someone go through all the steps and explain and give the warnings about the tension and all that good soldering stuff. Yep. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I like that. I think, yeah, I think I'll pick up some more of these kits because they're actually useful because then I can do these also for. Uh, Tabletop gaming, if we ever get tabletop gaming again. I forgot we used to do that. Actually, well, I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be doing on Roll20 a uh, d and 5th edition game soon. Nice. I do love d and okay. We're doing the Tesla Coil next, and we need uh, we do really want an anti-static band. This is an intermediate class. And then the follow-up, I forget what's after the Tesla Coil, the sound generator? 
then we'll, do, yeah, then we'll do the uh, tone generator afterwards because then we can plug it into the Tesla coil and attest it immediately. Okay. Well, Jelly, it, uh, it was a pleasure. Um, I am going to drop off. I hope you had a uh, wonderful time. I did, thank and you. I look forward to the next one. Do you mind if next time we do um, a live stream as well? Like we'll stream it to YouTube? Oh, sure. That, okay. We'll see if that brings in more people. But I've been uh, Jose Smith. I'm a systems engineer with Sanayu. And uh, you can reach me out on Slack on DigiRain in the Slack channel if you have any questions about this kit. If you ran into any problems, I can help you troubleshoot it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Everyone.